Hey guys, uh, so I'm going to be doing this quick video on how to follow radioactive carbons through glycolysis and the citric acid cycle. So there's three main ways to get a radioactive carbon into glycolysis or the citric acid cycle. You can do it either through carbon 1 or carbon 6 of glucose, carbon 2 or carbon 5 of glucose, and carbon 3 of, and carbon 4 of glucose. Know that uh, after aldolase, carbon-1 and carbon-6 of glucose will become carbon-3 of all the other products in the payoff phase. Carbon-2 and carbon-5 of glucose will become carbon-2 of all the other products in the payoff phase. And carbon-3 and carbon-4 of glucose, which is where it's going to split between, will become carbon-1 of all the other products. So here is the whole citric acid cycle. Uh, you can see that from the top we start with pyruvate, then pyruvate dehydrogenase occurs and we get acetyl-CoA. Um, and then uh, that's how we start into the citric acid cycle when acetyl-CoA is then reacted with oxaloacetate to make citrate. So first let's start with doing uh, carbon-1 of glucose being radioactively labeled, which will be then the methyl carbon of pyruvate. Um, remember that the methyl carbon is carbon-3 of pyruvate, and after at the aldolase splits, carbon-1 of glucose becomes carbon-3 of everything else. So here we'll do the first round. We have there the methyl carbon uh, circled in red. Um, as you can see with pyruvate dehydrogenase, nothing will happen to that methyl carbon, and it'll be still the methyl carbon on acetyl-CoA. Then when it's added into citrate, it's going to be added right where the red circle is, so it's going to be another methyl, um, just in between. So when you keep following it around, it's still going to be in the same position. Now in this third enzyme of the citric acid cycle, uh, it won't leave um, as carbon dioxide because the carbon dioxide that ends up leaving is the middle carboxyl okay so the middle carboxyl which is this one right here is not the one that's radioactively labeled so it's not going to leave as carbon dioxide okay so when you keep following that around we're going to have the Um, radioactive carbon in the methyl right there and you can see that as soon as it hits to succinate it's symmetrical so those two methyl carbons there's a probability that the radioactivity can be there so instead of having 100% radioactivity on the steps before here you get splits into uh, each carbon having 50% radioactivity so if you keep following those carbons Now in the second round, it's still very simple. So we have the initial two uh, carbons that were labeled from the first round. When we add that to an unradioactive acetyl-CoA, uh, it's the now the blue is what's going to have the radioactivity. So as you can see, the radioactivity shifted down uh, a carbon. And when we keep following here again, it doesn't end up leaving as carbon dioxide and neither here here it doesn't leave as carbon dioxide either so when we get to succinate which is the important part we have all of them radioactively labeled because of the symmetry so initially the bottom two were radioactively labeled but since there's symmetry we know we can't really tell which carbon is the radioactive one so there's a probability that each carbon on succinate will have 25% radioactivity. So that initial 100% gets split four times. So now after all of this, all the carbons are going to have some sort of radioactivity. Okay, so at the end of the second round, again, 100% radioactivity stays in the cycle and 0% radioactivity leaves as carbon dioxide. 
And the third round is when it starts to get interesting for carbon 1 of glucose. So here we go again. Uh, oxaloacetate has all of them being radioactively labeled. Um, now I'm going to change the color to orange, and that's what's going to be the radioactively labeled carbons in the third round. So here we have all four of the all four oxaloacetate carbons uh, labeled. When we get here to the second product, right, we have the carboxyl carbon that leaves a CO2 um, radioactively labeled. So that remember that we said that each of these carbons has 25% radioactivity, and that carbon is going to completely leave and go into CO2. So we can say that 25% ends up leaving at this step. And now we have three carbons left with radioactivity. And we see that, again, we have a carboxyl carbon that leaves a CO2. is going to get, uh, it's going to leave as CO2. So again, 25% leaves here. Now we have the last two carbons in succinyl-CoA being radioactively labeled. And when we get to succinate, Again, just like the previous step, everything that's radioactively labeled due to symmetry. And again, when you get to oxaloacetate, everything is uh, radioactively labeled. But remember that after this step, 50% of it has left as carbon dioxide and 50% of it remains. So when you get to succinate and all four of those carbons are radioactively labeled, each of those carbons has a quarter of that 50%. So what we can say is that each of those carbons has 12.5% radioactivity. Okay? So by the time it gets into the fourth round, each carbon has 12.5% radioactivity. In the third round, again, 50% uh, of uh, the radioactivity stays in the cycle, and 50% of the radioactivity leaves as carbon dioxide. Okay. Now the fourth round is um, another step. So here we have the initial four oxaloacetate uh, carbons that were labeled from the previous step, for, from the previous round. Um, remember, each of these has 12.5% radioactivity. So when we get here, again, we have a carboxyl that is radioactively labeled that can leave as carbon dioxide. So once it leaves, we have 12.5% leaving there. And then when we get to the other enzyme, we have the carboxyl again labeled and 12.5% leaves there. So a total of 25% of the original ra radioactivity leaves in the fourth round. Here we can see that after this step, uh, again, due to the symmetry, all of them end up having radioactivity, but only 25% of them are left. So at this moment, each of these carbons has a 6.25% radioactivity because in total they must add up to 25% radioactivity left behind. So what you can see in the third round is that 25% radioactivity stays in the cycle and 25% radioactivity is leaving as carbon dioxide. <clears throat> okay, now let's start with the second carbon of glucose. So this is going to be the carbonyl carbon of pyruvate. Um, and remember that the carbon-2 of glucose stays as carbon-2 of all the other products after the payoff phase during glycolysis. So we can see here that carbon-2 of pyruvate is still going to be the carbonyl carbon in acetyl-CoA. And then it's going to become the carboxy carbon uh, on citrate. So if you keep following that, you see that that specific carbon Dio uh, the carboxyl will not leave as carbon dioxide. So when you get to succinate again, you have symmetry, and both carboxyls can have this radioactivity. So here we split that 100% initial radioactivity into two. So each of those carboxyls has a 50% chance of being radioactive. So each one is 50% radioactive. <clears throat> So once we follow it all the way to oxaloacetate, we only have the radioactivity on those two car boxy carbons. So here we see that in the first round, um, when we label carbon-2 of glucose, which is still carbon-2 of pyruvate, 
100% radioactivity stays in the cycle and 0% radioactivity leaves as carbon dioxide. Now when you start the second round of uh, this whole step, we see that here both of the carboxy carbons of citrate are going to be radioactively labeled and we see here that in the first step uh, one of them is going to leave completely so here we're going to lose 50% radioactivity and then once we get to the next step that carboxy carbon is going to leave as CO2 so another 50% is lost now what's interesting is like unlike the carbon 1 of glucose being radioactively labeled this is the end of radioactivity so here um, up to the second round is when we stop seeing radioactivity at all for carbon 2. Now for carbon 3 is the simplest one. When pyruvate reacts with pyruvate dehydrogenase, remember that we have NADH, a proton, and carbon dioxide being made. That carbon dioxide being made is from pyruvate. So what we have to do here is that that initial carbon-3 of glucose or carbon-1 of pyruvate is going to be lost completely and not even enter into the citric acid cycle. So it doesn't even get into citrate or any of the products into the citric acid cycle for us to have rounds. Um, I hope you guys think that was helpful. Um, if you guys have any questions, just let me know. Thank you guys.